Well, hello. This is Gina Tudela, and I'm going to be showing you a fall card using the Autumn Leaves Bundle that's in the September through December mini catalog. So I'm going to turn my camera around and face it down so you can see what we're going to be creating this evening. Well, I'll be sharing with you, but then you can turn around and recreate it at your liking of what you want to change or whatever. Okay, here we go. Okay. Hi, Shirley. All right, so make sure I have everything right side up. Let's flip the camera down. Should be right. Yeah. Nope. This way. Hi, Deborah. Okay, no rotating. Okay. All right, what is this? All right, come on. I had it right the first time. Okay, let me not turn this off and hit the volume button. There we go. Okay. While you're live. I understand that. Okay. I gotta turn it the right way. And <laughs> that's not gonna work either. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I can't wait till I get my in swan set up. So <laughs> hey Shirley. Hey Deborah. Okay, this is it doesn't matter. Let me get that cord out of the way. So, anyway, so I'm going to show you how to add texture. Since we don't have that autumn paper, I'm using the Earthen Elegance DSP that's in our annual catalog. So, I'm going to show you the steps. I'm not going to make you wait for me to cut out the dies, but I do want to show you the dies. And I have them on two magnetic sheets. So, I like the idea that gave us two of the maple leaves, one big one, two little green leaves, the veins for these, and these do what you call a raised up cut with slips in it, and then they gave us two frames and a piece that makes it look like a piece of ribbon, which would be great with foil or glitter paper, and of course this one, it does the dotted lines to get track texture. So, it's an awesome bundle. So I'm going to move these out of our way. So, and I wrote down the measurements, but I will share. Hello, Sue. Anyways, the crumb cake is a five and a half by eight and a half. And it's a folded base. So let me move my notes out of the way so I can show you. So when you fold your cardstock, you want to just match up the two corners. And then you can press down in the center, and then you're going to use the bone folder or something that helps you do the fold. Or you can just use your fingers, whichever works best for you. And so this part, we're done with what we need to do, and I'm going to move that out of our way. The next step is I want to do the inside before my hands get all nasty <laughs> using the thing. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the same. And if y'all are not familiar with it, and everything is going to look upside down, but once I get my other camera, I won't have to worry about this because I'm using my phone. <laughs> so you won't see everything backwards. But there is an area. So when you open up your pad, you just go ahead and um, the new pads you pull. But this is an old pad. Let me find a new pad. Well, of course, none of these are new. But anyways, your new pads you pull up. The old pads had the three dots, which meant push, press, and lift up, okay? And then, anyways, so I wanted to share that. So, but the new pads, you just pull up and pull out. All right, so we're going to stamp the greeting. And the reason why I want to do this first, hi, Lori, we want to make sure that it's dry before I do a blend with a blending brush. And you just, when you're stamping with photopolymer, you want to count to five, and it's also good to stamp either on a piece of cardboard from your paper pumpkin kit or a foam cushion, okay? 
and then we're going to let that just dry for a moment and I'm going to move that out of the way and then we're going to use the crush curry I know this is upside down and it doesn't help when I'm doing that that way either so oh my gosh <laughs> but y'all get the idea of it so when you use a blending brush you're going to just tap it move this out of the way here you just want to tap it on the pad don't press down okay and then you want to hold it and then you want to start off the paper and then you're just going to go in a circular motion very lightly and go till you get the color the color that you like and go all the way around and it's just going to give it a nice listen see that and if you can do it darker if you want to, I'm going to add just a little bit more because I kind of want it just to highlight it. There we go. And the lighting in here, I need to see if I can change that up, but I don't want to do that. But y'all can get the idea. It's just a light yellow. So we're going to move that out of the way because we're done with that for the time being. And I want to share a tip. So those of y'all that don't know, our photopolymers are actually two stamps. So I'm going to show you with this one. So this is the actual image that's on it. So I'm going to ink this up and just walk it across the pad. All right. And this is what it looks like normally. Okay. So I'm going to twist this off. But if you take this off. And you flip it over, and we'll press down on it, then we're going to ink it up. It's going to give you a solid image. Now I want to stamp that off. Then I want to stamp it on the envelope. I want to make sure my flap's at the top. And then you're going to just stamp it down here at the bottom. And then it gives you a, out, a solid image of a leaf. Then we're going to go and take the vein of that same leaf and this is one of those ones that you definitely want to be careful with photopolymer the reason why I'm saying is when you go to pull them off you want to gently lift and pull these can tear so be very gentle for any of the ones that are very detailed photopolymer so we're going to ink this up and we're going to bring this in and it's going to give you the vein to the leaf see that so you have two leaves. See this one and this one. Whoops, let me get it right there. There we go. So, just want to share that. So that's the envelope is done. So I'm going to leave that yellow open because we're going to need that in a little bit. So let's go to the next step. So we have three pieces of cardstock. I used an early espresso which is three and seven eighths by four and one eighth. Then I'm using the Cajun Craze, which is three and a half by three and three fourths. And those two get glued together. Then I chose out this one from the Earth and Elegance 12 by 12 DSP that's in our annual catalog. And it's cut at three and one fourth by three and one half. So whenever you're putting pieces together, you want to start off with your smallest and go to the next one. And my favorite glue is the multi-purpose glue. The reason why I use this the most is it's easy to position, easy to shift, and it's great for dry embossing when you're doing layering. It's great for boxes and small pieces. And keep in mind, the best tool to have with this is your silicone mat. This glue doesn't stick to it. So whenever you're doing small pieces, that's the way to go. You just use that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on the back of the Cajun Craze. Then I'm going to layer this on top of the Early Espresso. And then just get that shifted and it looks pretty straight. So now we're going to add some texture. My favorite um, thing is adding texture. We're going to use this die cutting machine. Let me move that worksheet out of the way. 
And of course, this apparatus is going to take a lot of the space. But I want you to see. If I can kind of move that stuff out of the way. So, we're going to use the painted texture embossing folder. Look at that texture. Yeah. So, the piece that we just put together, we're going to put it in an embossing folder. And you want to center it, and you never want to put your paper up here by the fold. Okay? So, we're going to lay this on here. And it doesn't matter what type of die cutting machine you use. Just remember, you're using only the platform and the thing that's for 3D embossing folders. So, those of you that bought the old Big Shot from me from Stampin' Up! years ago, it came out in 2006, you would be using the purple plate that they offered for our 3D embossing folders when they first came out. And you're going to roll it through there. And it's going to be a little tight because we do have three pieces of layering there. But it's not going to mess up your machine at all. I'm going to move this big honker out of the way. And bring us back in and flip this sheet over. And wait till you see the texture because we're going to use some ink with a blending brush to show that texture. Here we go. I'll make sure I stay in the camera so y'all can see. So, we are going to use Early Espresso. Just don't go heavy with your brush. So y'all can tell my brush is well used, well loved. And what I do is the browns go with all the browns, the greens go with all the greens, and vice versa with the yellow, the orange, the reds. So you're just going to tap it around your pad, and you're going to start off the paper and go in a circular motion. And be sure to hold the top of your brush so that way, because this is flimsy right here, so it can break. So just hold it with your fingers. Can you see? You can see the texture coming out. It's so cool. Hey, Denise. It's just going to come out so nice and lovely. And you can make it as dark or as light as you want. Just remember to always start off with your brush on the outside edge and bring in. Because luckily this paper is a little bit dark, but you can really see the texture. Isn't that nice? Okay, so I'm going to move that away. So I didn't want to make y'all wait for cutting out the pieces, but I cut out one, one large maple leaf, the two medium maples, and then the vein, which goes with this one. And then the label for our greeting. And then one of the oak leaves. So what we're going to do first is we're going to stamp this with the crumb cake and this leaf. And this is the, where is it, the stamp set? Did I show that to you? Yes, here is the stamp set. And of course, it's going to be upside down. But like I said, once I get the other machine coming, I will have it all squared away. <laughs> Sad part about being live, Facebook doesn't let you flip your phone around versus when I do it as a YouTube video. So I do apologize. <clears throat> so when you ink up your stamp, you want to just walk it around the pad. And then you're just going to eye it. And you're going to press and then count to five. And remember to push all the way around. And then you're going to take that right off. And see, I didn't get it right there in the center. Well, that's not a problem. We can ink it up again. And I can eye it. Let me take my glasses down because I see up close better without my glasses on. So, but we are going to blend and sponge. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. I understand. <laughs> and it still has a spot difference. It's not going to matter because when you see the card completed, you'll understand that too. So let's go ahead and stamp the greeting. And what I did, I just love the verses in this set. I'm thankful. And then added the little one, today and every day. I thought this was just apropos and this card could be used throughout the fall as well as for Thanksgiving. So, 
great for place setting and those that do journals during that time frame, which my sons both do. You're just going to ink it up and you're going to stamp straight down. And remember, I said these are two different stamps I put together on one block. And there you go. Okay. I'll move that back out of the way. Okay. Now, this one here, we're going to go ahead and sponge around the outside edge with the Crush Curry. I'm going to move my leaf out of the way just to give it a little bit of color. And this is the new in color, and I can't think of the name of it. <laughs> Maybe you can help me, Denise. <laughs> it came out with the Pebble Path. I, it's, it's just, my mind's escaped me right now, and I can't think of the name of it. Oh my gosh, it reminds me of an okra color. Oh, but I don't know. But when I go and put my recipe, when I go and download the video, I'll have all that wrote down for y'all. It's not in my notes over here to my right. <laughs> So that is done for right now. Now we're going to go ahead and do the oak leaf and we're going to add the green, which is Mossy Meadow. And we're going to start off very lightly because Mossy Meadow is a dark color. Wild wheat. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate it. So you're going to start off and you're just going to go across very lightly. So you see how dark it would have been if I didn't do that? Yeah. So you can go around the edge, and then it just makes your leaf look like it's two-toned, because we stamped it with the crumb cake. There we go. And then if you want your edges a little bit darker, you can just bring your, your blending brush and hold the paper up and go across the edge. And you don't have to stamp that off with the brush. And the good thing about these, they don't break apart like what we used to have with sponges. I probably was buying a package of sponges every week. Everybody loves sponging and edging. Okay, so move that done. Now we are going to do the glue. And of course, I didn't bring my silicone mat in here, but that's what I recommend when you're using the wet glue. So I'm just going to dot it. Or if you don't have one... If you dot it and you let it sit for a few minutes and it becomes translucent, then it's not wet and you won't get it all over your hands. So I'm just dotting it all the way around. Anyways, let me ask a question. What is your favorite item in the September through December mini? What did you like best out of all of them? So anybody can answer. Just put it in the comment. Okay, all done with the gluing. Here we go. Yeah, y'all can tell I'm not scared of it. I don't care if I get glue on my fingers. <laughs> Here we go. We're just going to go ahead and place it in there. And then we're going to set that to the side. Isn't that nice? It gives it the three dimensionals. So... Beautiful. And keep in mind, I forgot and I put a little bit of glue there, so I'm not going to lay that. I'm going to turn it upside down for the time being and move it over there out of our way. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and do the oak leaf. And we'll go ahead and we're going to use the more mustard, which highlights the wild wheat. Okay. Now, after that, we're going to hold it up. And we're going to go across it. And keep in mind, like I said, it's got slits in it. I just want to do halfway around that and give it that little, with the early espresso, just a soft tone. And you can do it as light or as dark as you want. Okay? And then I'm just going to go very gently around on that one corner. And there is the leaf. Oh, I like the Holy Night Sweets. Thank you, Debbie, as well as the Daisy Sweet. Well, I, I've been doing a couple classes with that throughout the, as soon as it came out. All right, so our next one is the two maple leaves. One's going to be green, and one is going to be pumpkin pie. And the green 
is the mossy meadow. So since I already have that one out here, first we'll start with that. And I may not need to have to add any green because I think it's got enough. So we're just going to go across the whole thing. As you saw in my first sample that I did, I almost overdid it. So you don't want to have to, don't want to have a big blob as I did on that one sample that I just shared. See, I inked it up and got a big blob. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. All right, so now we're going to use the pumpkin pie. And I'll get the, the brown. We're going to be going back to the early espresso afterwards. So, and I have the little ones. We have blending brushes both sides. And I'm going to start off and so that you see how well the ink that is. So I'm just going to start off really in the center. Gently go in a circular motion. Circular, the more you do the circular, it gives it more of a very soft look which is what you really want. You want it. And if you want it darker in certain areas, just stay focused in that area. Yes, I like the decorative mask, but I don't know if that'll be too messy <laughs> when I'm doing the computer over here on my desk. So I haven't tried that, do a video with that, Deborah, yet, but I will. No worries. So now we're going to move those out of the way. And the next step is we're going to give it with a brown tone. So... I'm going to come in with the Early Espresso, start off the paper, and just go around the edges. Just to give it like it's changing. How many of y'all love the fall? So, I, I love all four seasons because it makes us appreciate each one as we go through it. But... My favorite is the spring because I'm a bright colored person. I love bright colors, but I like the fall colors too. But my favorite one is spring. So see how it gives it the tone? Isn't that nice? And now I'll do the same thing with the pumpkin pie. Start off the paper and just go around. And just gives it that little bit of changing tone like it was orange and then it went and then it goes to be brown and then they're off the trees for good and it's like oh my gosh the trees are naked now so all right so that's all done so our next step is we're going to go ahead and place this on our base and let me make sure i have no ink on my hands <laughs> Oh, good, Debbie. It's not as messy as I would think. Well, I've done the masking class, and you have to have a dish of water to put it in, and that's what I'm saying. So, I would have to get it all set up to where I have something that I don't have to worry about it spilling in my living room area. So, so we just use the wet glue. Whenever you do do dry embossing, you definitely want to use wet glue or tear tape. Whichever one that you prefer. So I'm going to bring this down here and even it up where it's centered on the two sides and the bottom. And you got to kind of count and hold it in the place for just a little bit. Okay, we are set. So. I was supposed to texture this, and I foo-pawed, so I've got to do that real quick. I was wondering why it didn't look right until I looked at my sample. So let me do that real quick. It won't take a second. I'm going to do one. There's my plate. So you can do both of them at the same time, but I recommend not to because you're saying that's on there is only one thickness where the DSP, the... Cajun Craze and the Early Espresso are three paces, so do emboss those separately. So, there we go. Now I can get this out of the way. Alright. So now, now I can see why I didn't have texture on there when I did it. So, so now we're going to go ahead and then add... This is going to stand out even more so. 
with the crushed curry. Then you're going to see that texture. And a couple of the ladies in class yesterday, morning and evening, they chose to add a little bit of brown around the edges. And I probably will do that. So, just to add that. Oh yeah, that it just enhances it even more so. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So, first off, we're going to take the tear tape and put that on the back in the center to hold the ribbon. Did I not bring my tear tape? Oh yeah, here it is. In front of me. Yeah, there's an Hi, Donna. Don't you know? <laughs> Whenever you're looking at something, it's right in front of you. It's a bitch. <laughs> So you're going to take the tear tape, and you don't have to go all the way to it, all the way to the end. But we're going to add this beautiful texture ribbon, and then you want to burnish your tear tape. Just rub it back and forth, and we're going to use this again. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to take my take you pick tool. This is I, this tool is a must have. If you don't have one, definitely use it because I'm going to use it for several things. Okay. Don't have a garbage can here. So we're going to take this ribbon, and this is about five inches, and this is texture. Can you see the texture? Yeah. This is the K copper clay. It's the end, one of the end colors, and it's the ribbon. And those of y'all that are not familiar, the ribbon only stays in the catalog for one year. So if there's any colors you definitely want, don't wait till March to buy it. <laughs> because then it's gone. Okay, so then you're going to add the tear tape above and below. Yes, you can use dimensionals, but I usually like to use tear tape so the card is not so bumpity because you would have to pay extra in postage. So I always think of that, especially when I'm mailing cards out, which I'll be mailing this one out. Then you're just going to burnish it on either side, and then you're going to peel this off. See how quickly that comes off? And then you, and I usually go through the center to pick it up. And this is great for the dimensionals too. Poke a hole, pull it off. Okay, so we're going to place this at the top of the card. We'll turn this around, and I'm bringing it right to the top edge of the early espresso and then just make sure you press across and I'm going to take and I have two pairs of paper snips one is strictly for ribbon you see that ribbon tied on there hi Donna okay and this one's for paper so if you have one for scissors or your scissors for paper make sure the ribbon one has ribbon on it so people don't use it for paper <laughs> and you're just going to trim it I'm just trimming mine off at an angle or you can do an inward V cut, whatever your preference is. And then cut those off. Move that out of the way. Okay, now we're going to go and place our leaves. So, first one you want to do is you want to place your biggest one. And you can do the leaf this way, or you can do the leaf this way. So, I did two different leaves, two different cards, two different ways. So, I have one this way. And then I have one this way. So I put the saying at the bottom on one. <clears throat> Let me move more button. And then I put the saying at the top. And Donna, I apologize. I am upside down because I forgot you can't flip the phone around when you're live with Facebook. You can when you're doing a YouTube video. But I got an in Swan 2 coming, so this will make it a lot easier. I don't have to fool with that. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do the one that's at the top with the leaf going down at the bottom. So I'm just going to add my Tombow Multi-Purpose Glue. And you don't have to add much. You just want to do, try not to get close to your edge because it does seep out. And then I got glue there already. It's already, I can see the translucent. And then you're going to just slide this in this corner. And of course, it's going to be opposite what you see. It's at the bottom left hand corner where it's located on the video it shows at the top it's not at the top <laughs> uh, believe me i'll take pictures and share so you'll understand 
Next, we're going to take the two maple leaves and and they can be like they're falling. They don't have to be any set direction. So I'm going to do one up here and then one coming off of the same. Okay. And this one looks like it's falling downward. There we go. So get those glued on. And then, and usually when I get a lot of glue like this, I just will kiss the two. You just kiss them so you don't have too much excess glue. And then I already know where I'm placing that. There we go. And then I know I'm placing this one over here coming out of the corner. There we go. Now, this oak leaf is going on the inside piece that I did earlier. So, I did the envelope and then I did the inside piece and showed that. And it's got a sponge yellow. So, I'm just going to put it right here to highlight the saying. Autumn teaches us that change can be beautiful. I just love that saying. Then I'm going to add the wet glue and put this on the inside. And then a small X in the center. Now I'm done with that glue. I'll just put the lid on it. Okay. Then we're just going to center this. Best of my ability. There we go. And just run your hand around. And there you go. And last but not least, let me show you a trick. These are our flat pearls. They are in the mini, the, not mini, the annual catalog where the embellishments are. And I took the Crumb Cake Stampin' Blend. And you want to use old ones because it will tether your blend brush. You can try to use a writer's tip, but it doesn't work right. So I always say, when you have a Stampin' Blend that's worn out, put it to the side to save it for embellishments. And then you're going to highlight that. And then I'm going to highlight one with Calypso Coral. It's the dark one. And our Stampin' Blends, they come in two in a package. Hi, Sherry Nielsen. And they come light and dark. I love the blends. They color so easily. But don't do, you see how that brush gets? That's fine doing on embellishments when it's a worn out one. You don't want to use a brand new one. So you color the flat pearl. And then I'm going to do one in green. And I'll bring that up to you. So don't use blends when they're new. Save your old ones. Put them in a thing and say they're for embellishments or ribbon. Look, and the alcohol markers dry instantly. So now we're going to take and bring those in. So let me get my old scissors. Hi, Sherry. And then you're going to take it and I'm going to add it over here. They're called the flat pearls. And they are flat adhesive back pearls. Let me clarify myself there. And let me get that. Okay. So just to tell you, if you have trouble picking up embellishments, I don't right now, but I may. We have what you call the end on the other side of the Take Your Pick tool, and it has a putty. So just get that molded. And then you can pick this up just like that. And then you can place it where you want it and press down on it. And then do the same thing. You want to push with a point and then you want to pick up with the putty. Just like this. And I always do like a, I like to do a triangle effect. So there you go. There is the done card. And like I said, let me move it in the picture here. Um, it is upside down, but I'll take pictures and share so that way y'all can see it. And this is recorded, so you will be able to see the recording. I'm going to go ahead and transfer, get it saved onto my computer and then make it a YouTube, but then I'll repost it with the samples and the measurements. So thank you so much for watching. I will be doing another live tomorrow evening, and it will be on a Christmas card. 
Thank you, everybody that came and joined. Have a wonderful Wednesday evening. Bye-bye for now.